Hello again, best of trackers! Welcome to the final Ranking of the Ranks video, as we talk about captains on this edition of... Yeah, it's the best, but worst, but no one of me. Yeah, it's the best, but worst, but tracks ever seen. The most seen and generally talked about position on any Star Trek cast is the captain. We've seen quite a few over the 900-ish episodes called Trek, and these rankings are based purely on Alpha Canon on-screen depictions of these officers' usefulness to Starfleet, specifically during their time in the captain's chair. As always, starting at fifth worst, Durango, the captain of the Cali-class USS Merced, who showed his Tellarite ego to be far larger than the ancient alien generation ship his crew, and that of the Cerritos, were assigned to tow. For no other reason than trying to upstage Captain Freeman, he gives orders that result in tearing a hole in the generation ship and releasing terraforming material that costs him his ship and nearly the Cerritos as well. According to Carol, he's always been boring, but decided to take a chance and spice things up during maybe the most boring Routine mission we've seen across Trek. Number four, Captain Benteen. What lands her here is exactly the opposite of everyone else on the worst part of this list. She followed her orders too closely. After being the liaison to Admiral Layton for years, it bought her a promotion to the refit Excelsior class USS Lakota, where she was put in the unenviable position of destroying the Defiant supposedly taken over by changeling infiltrators. Thankfully, she does figure out she's being used as a pawn by Leighton, but only after dozens of Starfleet officers on the two ships are killed, when all she had to do was open a channel with the Defiant. Sometimes it's hard to see the forest through the trees. Number three, Rudolph Ransom. His ship suffered the same fate as Voyager by being brought to the Delta Quadrant via the Caretaker. However, the Nova-class USS Equinox was less equipped to deal with the harsh realities of being 70,000 light-years from home than Voyager. This somehow justified in Ransom's mind the use of beings from another dimension as a fuel source that can get them home faster. This may actually be more malicious than some of the entries above, but I'm taking into account the body count here, which is comparatively small in this case, combined with Ransom's remorse by the end, which keeps his heinous crimes from landing him in a worse ranking. Number two, Benjamin Maxwell. This man racked up quite a high confirmed kill count, and he gets to that point by doing the wrong things for the right reasons. A veteran of the Cardassian border wars before the TNG days, who didn't fully let go of his hatred and prejudices when the peace treaty came. Turns out his gut instincts about the Cardassians not honoring treaty agreements were valid, but taking the Nebula class USS Phoenix on a rogue mission to destroy Cardassian ships running weapons is pretty far above the pay grade of a single Starfleet captain. I'm guessing none of his other senior officers would ever be offered their own command after following Maxwell's unlawful orders. If he hadn't realized himself to be somewhat in the wrong and turned himself in, he could have been the number one on this list. And the worst captain at number one? Ronald Tracy. The captain of the Constitution-class USS Exeter ended up stranded on planet Omega-4, and armed the group that took him in, known as the Combs, with phasers that led to the slaughter of possibly thousands of their enemies, the Yangs. The thing that sets Tracy apart from others on this list is a general lack of remorse. He thinks he did what he had to do to save himself, but his justifications ring pretty hollow compared to the body count he's responsible for on a primitive planet, that once governed themselves by an exact copy of the U.S. Constitution. Trying to take out Kirk rather than using this as a chance to research the condition that keeps them there through the Enterprise just cements his truly bad intentions. If he'd never had a run-in with Omega-4, his ego and tactics probably would have landed him among Starfleet's greatest badmirals. 
As we rank up to the best captains, if you're enjoying the content, please consider a like and subscribe. Fifth best, Benjamin Sisko, the half-man, half-fifth-dimensional being that single-handedly saved the Alpha Quadrant powers from the Dominion, could have made number one on this list. If not for a pesky little attempted genocide event and devastation of a biosphere, all to catch his personal white whale, Michael Eddington. Looking past that, though, as the captain of the class prototype and namesake USS Defiant, he could often see the realistic needs of the officers under him, while still looking out for Starfleet's best interests. A generally well-rounded individual, in touch with his emotions while still being a soldier at heart. He always saw the bigger picture, while usually doing the right thing on a micromanagement level. He even intended to sacrifice himself for his Starfleet principles to stop Dukat and the Pa-Wraiths, and is now walking with the Prophets. Number 4. Rachel Garrett Begin the rest of this list putting captains of ships named Enterprise on a pedestal. After being pulled across time into an alternate reality mid-battle with the Romulans, and near death, she's still willing to take the Ambassador-class USS Enterprise C back to a fight they can't win for the sake of preserving a rosier timeline. She unfortunately wouldn't make it back to her own time, ironically because of the Klingons that she was trying to save in her own time. But her determination persuades her crew to do their duty. While we don't know a ton about this lost era captain, her willingness to sacrifice her ship and crew at Narendra 3 based solely on Guinan's time shenanigan barometer, is a testament to her dedication to Starfleet. Update from the editing room, best of trackers. As I was putting this video together, we got confirmation that Rachel Garrett will feature in the new Section 31 long track, along with it taking place sometime in the Lost Era. Look forward to that. Number 3. Christopher Pike. Harkening back to Trek's Episode 0, Pike is another well-rounded captain with a ton of hobbies and a rare ability among captains to love someone for longer than an episode. At the end of his first five-year mission aboard the Enterprise, it just so happened the Crossfield class USS Discovery needed a captain during a weird occurrence of signals from an entity known as the Red Angel. Through this, he makes a choice to save the future of the galaxy at the known cost of ending up highly crippled by Delta Radiation in yet another heroic act saving a group of cadets. Heading into his second five-year mission aboard the OG Constitution-class USS Enterprise, we find a man that breeds loyalty among his crew, a warm, gentle captain that kept going in the role despite multiple crises of faith. Number two, James R. Mm, T. Kirk, the consummate captain that could truly never take a promotion, and would captain not one, but two Constitution-class USS Enterprises. He saved the galaxy multiple times, helped many civilizations retain their culture, and was the bane of any AI that got in his way. The only thing that keeps him from the number one spot is his impulsivity. While that sometimes was a gain, it also had the potential to backfire if he didn't have plot armor at least as thick as Michael Burnham. He almost always does the right thing, though that occasionally came at the cost of snubbing Starfleet. But he ended up paying a high price twice to save lives, both on the Enterprise B by seemingly sacrificing himself way before Tuesday, and again with Picard against Soren. Maybe someday we'll see him taken out of cold storage at Daystrom Station for one more chance to save the galaxy. And the best captain in Trek? At number one, Jean-Luc Picard. During TNG's first few seasons, he was Mr. Starfleet, forsaking his family on Earth or any chance at a love life for the organization he held dear. Well, kind of rigid there for a while, Captaining the flagship and running into all kinds of oddities the universe had to offer softened many of his stances during his stint in the big chair of the Galaxy-class USS Enterprise-D. Between that and the Sovereign-class Enterprise-E, 
he spent nearly 20 years just captaining Federation flagships. Like Kirk, though, he never really fit into the Admiral-grade command structure, and was forced to resign for being too Starfleet for the new post-Dominion War, more cautious Starfleet, which despite his rank during the events of Star Trek Picard, he's still that gung-ho yet measured captain doing the on-the-ground work to save lives and help others. Who's your favorite Starfleet captain?